Yeah, hi there. These comments are from Merv, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the Seven Step System to Pass a TOEFL. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a cold right now. To pass a TOEFL IBT. And uh, you completed, let's take a look at the practice test here. It's uh, what is better when preparing for an exam, studying alone or studying with a group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to your response uh, and, then, and then give you some comments and also a score on a scale of 0 to 30 points so you can find your TOEFL speaking level right now. Here we go. When preparing for an exam, which way is better? Studying alone or studying with a group? I think both way have its uh, both its advantages and disadvantages. For example, studying alone, you can feel more focused when you're studying. On the other hand, studying with a group sometimes causes distractions. Moreover, studying alone has uh, disadvantages too. For example, you can feel more isolated. On the other hand, uh, studying with a group make you realize the topics you need to improve. So, both way have its own advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so let's take a look here. So uh, I'm looking at the um, TOEFL. I'm going to put you at 2.0 out of 4, 15 points out of 30 on this particular practice test. That's probably where you are right now. Uh, all right, so let's listen to it again one more time. When preparing for an exam, which way is better, studying alone or studying with a group? I think both way. So you don't really need to repeat exactly the question. That's showing some limitations uh, with your grammar and vocabulary. So you might want to say something like this. You might want to say, well, if I have to choose uh, between studying alone or studying in a group, when I am preparing for an exam, I would rather, and then state what your opinion is, and maybe two reasons. So uh, that would be my first comment. Uh -huh. It's uh, both, it's advantages, I think, both way. You want to say both ways. Way is a count noun. It has singular and plural form. So when you say both, you want to say both ways. Uh -huh. It's, uh, it's not it's, it's their. Both ways have their advantages and disadvantages. Both, it's advantages and disadvantages. Now the problem is there's no way in 45 seconds that you can really satisfy that introduction. So what you're trying to do here is talk about the advantages and disadvantages of both methods of study. But let's be realistic here. Your goal here is to make sure you have specific detail to support your generalizations. And with that type of focus, you're not going to have enough time to do that. So in this case, it's better to actually make a choice. Instead of discussing both, discuss which one you think is better and then why. As opposed to discussing both, you're not going to be able to support both of those ideas. For example, studying alone, you can feel more... For studying alone, I wouldn't say you. Don't use that second person point of view there. You want to use either I or the he, she, or it point of view. That's the third person or first person point of view is going to be better than the uh, you. Focused when you're studying. On the other hand... If, if, you, if you talk about that, you have to give an example at that point. Feel more focused when you're studying. On the other hand... So once you say you feel more focused, students feel more focused when they study, then at that point you have to present an example to illustrate that idea. Instead, you're now moving on to your next idea. Studying with a group sometimes causes distractions. 
No, when you say studying with a group causes distraction, say for example, if, if, if I'm studying in a history class and I'm trying to learn about the causes of World War II, if I'm studying in a group I might be distracted and may not focus as much on what I'm trying to do. So you have to give some type of example to illustrate that idea. Now notice you're having these longer pauses and these hesitations. That's, that's another reason why I'm giving you a lower score here, around 2.0 uh, out of 4, because you can't have those types of pauses. That indicates that you're, you're thinking in your mind what you're trying to say, but you're not sure what you want to say, so that's showing you don't really have good speaking fluency. One has uh, disadvantages too, for example, You can feel more isolated. Instead of saying you say students can feel more isolated. isolated. On the hand. You talk about isolated. At that point, you have to give an example to illustrate that. It's studying with a group make you realize. Notice how you're at 53 seconds already. You're already past the 45 second time yes, limit. the topics you need to improve. So both way have it. Both ways its own have their own advantages, not it. Okay, so what do we got? Uh, like I said before, 2.0 out of 4, 15 points out of 30. So delivery, the main thing with your delivery is your pacing and probably your intonation. So pacing means you have too many pauses in there, so you have to improve really two, two major areas. You have to improve, first of all, what's called thought groups. That means that you need to pause after four or five stressed syllables with slightly rising intonation, then the next thought group, when you get to the final thought group in the sentence, your tone needs to drop. Also, within each thought group, you want to blend the words within the thought group. That's going to help you with your pacing. That's, that's something that you need to work on immediately. Also, you need to work on your intonation. You, you have the tendency to use only one tone throughout your response. You have to work on that. Language use, you're very limited with both your grammar and your vocabulary and you're having quite a few problems with your grammatical correctness. Notice how you said both uh, ways and then you said have its. You want to say both ways have their own advantages and disadvantages so several times in the response you had some problems with what's called pronoun agreement. So you have to work on that. So if, you're, if your subject or your noun is plural, then the pronouns you refer back to that need to also be plural. All right, topic development. This is also a major problem with you. You are, you are trying to do simply too much in, in a short period of time. So the strategy here is not to discuss advantages and disadvantages of both methods of study. You're not going to be able to do that in 45 seconds. So you should have chosen one of the positions and then explained why it is the most appropriate method of study in your opinion based on your own personal experience. That's probably the best way you can do that. All right, and that's it. So thank you for doing the... the uh, free TOEFL speaking practice test evaluation. If you like my feedback, uh, I'm going to ask you two things. Uh, number one, if you really are serious about improving your speaking, I have many, many lessons to help you improve your speaking. First of all, I have a pronunciation section in my online course that will deal specifically with all the problems I just told you about in this uh, video. Right now, secondly, you can also post a link to my course at your social media. Even if you don't join my course, uh, I would really be appreciative if you can do that and you can tell other people. So you're helping me advertise, and I also gave you some free uh, TOEFL feedback so you can find your level right now. All right, so thank you for doing this uh, practice test, and happy holidays from Oak Hills, California, the United States of America.